Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, March 31st, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today, after hearing about the separation that the man and the woman experienced, we're going to see them reunited. Where has your love gone, most beautiful of women? Which way has he turned? We will seek him with you. My love has gone down to his garden, to beds of spice, to feed in the gardens and gather lilies. I am my love's, and my love is mine. He feeds among the lilies. You are as beautiful as Tirza, my darling, lovely as Jerusalem awe-inspiring as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they captivate me. Your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down from Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes coming up from washing, each one having a twin and not one missing. Behind your veil, your brow is like a slice of pomegranate. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines and young women without number. But my dove, my virtuous one, is unique. She is the favorite of her mother, perfect to the one who gave her birth. Women see her and declare her fortunate, queens and concubines also, and they sing her praises. Who is this who shines like the dawn, as beautiful as the moon, bright as the sun, awe-inspiring as an army with banners? I came down to the walnut grove to see the blossoms of the valley, to see if the vines were budding and the pomegranates blooming. I didn't know what was happening to me. I felt like I was in a chariot with a nobleman. Come back, come back, Shulamite. Come back, come back, that we may look at you. How you gaze at the Shulamite as you look at the dance of the two camps. As we continue reading in the letter to the Hebrews, the writer takes a little bit of a break in demonstrating Christ's superiority over all things to give us a warning against falling away from this faith in Christ. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teaching about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works, faith in God, teaching about ritual washings, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. For it is impossible to renew to repentance those who were once enlightened, who tasted the heavenly gift, who shared in the Holy Spirit, who tasted God's good word and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away. This is because, to their own harm, they are re-crucifying the Son of God, and holding him up to contempt. For the ground that drinks the rain that often falls on it, and that produces vegetation useful to those for whom it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and about to be cursed, and at the end will be burned. Even though we are speaking this way, dearly loved friends, in your case we are confident of things that are better, and that pertain to salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you demonstrated for his name by serving the saints and by continuing to serve them. Now we desire each of you to demonstrate the same diligence for the full assurance of your hope until the end, so that you won't become lazy, but will be imitators of those who inherit the promises through faith and perseverance. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater to swear by, he swore by himself, I will indeed bless you, and I will greatly multiply you. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and for them a confirming oath ends every dispute. Because God wanted to show his unchangeable purpose even more clearly to the heirs of the promise, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that through two unchangeable things, 
in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Jesus has entered there on our behalf as a forerunner, because he has become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.